Is the smash and grab a smashing success? Let's find out. Hello everybody, the Brickologist here with another throwback LEGO Space Police set review. Today we're taking a closer look at set number 5982, Smash and Grab. This set used to retail for about $20 here in the US, adjusted for inflation that's closer to $28 in 2024 money, contains 188 pieces, and here is a front look at your box. The back of the box shows off some of the play features inside of this set. This set includes one instruction manual with 48 pages of build building in the back has quite a few advertisements including some of the same artwork we saw on the back of the box an ad for the one other set from this winter 2010 wave of space police but we also have that classic 2009 space police ad with the lineup of mug shots of all the villains what an incredible collection of sets this was and finally we have an ad for the adventures of clutch powers and lego really was marketing this movie hard because there was an ad for this on the bottom of the box Box too, which is quite unusual for Lego box art. Crazy. This movie also is kind of garbage. And here is the set itself. You get two builds, two minifigures. Let's look at the minifigures here first. The first minifigure here is a Space Police Commando. And if you've watched some of my other Space Police set reviews, especially one from a 2009 set, you know I was never a huge fan of their helmets in those sets. However, here in 2010, they gave them what was a brand new helmet at the time with a really cool looking red visor and it's great. Now Lego has used that helmet to death in all sorts of other themes but in 2010 this was a really exciting brand new part. The rest of the figures are the exact same. I've never been crazy about these guys, but they work out pretty well. They have the oxygen tank on the back, and this guy in particular has a nice face that is double-sided, and they have some good back printing. I'm just really hyped about this really fantastic helmet. The villain character included with this set here is Squidtron, and if he looks familiar to you, that's probably because he's kind of just a recolor of Squid Man from the first wave of Space Police sets in 2009 and this feels very lazy to me. Lego was not super creative with this villain and I think that hurts the set overall because most of the Space Police sets are iconic for having such unique villains, but this one's villain is hardly unique at all. Now, he has some great printing. I love the coloration, especially the purple on the top of his head, but for the most part, it's just kind of a boring figure. His printing though and his torso and legs are pretty good and his back print is nice as well. It's not like a poorly designed figure, it's just way too derivative of Squid Man. The first build we'll take a closer look at here is the MacGuffin of this set, the Asteroid Bank ATM. This is supposed to be an automatic teller machine built into an asteroid, which is a really fun science fiction concept. I also love the logo, which is of course a reference to the classic Lego space logo, always a breath of fresh air to see that in any Lego set. The rest of this build here is fine. You have a sticker detail right there. There's some nice brown parts for the asteroid shaping. And then there's a little bit of a feature back here where you can lift this up and it reveals a couple of $100 Lego bills inside. I feel like they could have done a more interesting feature to have the money actually come out of this ATM. That would have been very cool to me. Additionally, we'll talk about what this piece does later on in the review. The main build of this set here is Squidtron's vehicle, which LEGO refers to as the Ram Raider. It's basically a customized space tow truck that has clearly been pimped out and it looks very cool. I think black and yellow obviously go great together. Yellow and purple are opposites on the color wheel, so they go great together. Together, and they combine those two fabulous color schemes into one really striking package. I'm guessing the ram part comes from this battering ram-esque grill at the front here that looks very cool and these spikes are a nice detail. Additionally, you have these pieces right here that are actually missiles. Lego refers to these as plasma cannons and there's a Technic rod that goes all the way through this entire build. If you push it from the back, it will launch them out a decent distance, not a half bad flick fire missile feature. The rest of the aesthetics up front here are great. This Technic piece here is used really effectively and I think those flames in black and yellow are great 
stickers. That is really cool. The main cockpit too is a yellow part and I just love this color scheme so much. Accessing the cockpit is very simple. You can easily just take this piece off to reveal the interior. It's just a steering wheel inside there, not a ton of detail, but you can fit Squidtron and his big old head in there, which looks pretty cool. Each side has a clip storage for some accessory. You have a wrench on this side and then a little blaster over here, which looks pretty nice. However, the details on here are lacking. I think they could have covered up some of these Technic holes with maybe a plate piece. That would have looked better. What isn't lacking in detail though are these engines. I mean, man, Lego really went hard on these things. They look very, very cool. And from the back, I like the look, but where's the exhaust? I feel like a flame piece coming out the back would have worked really well. There are a couple more nice engine pieces right here for some added detail. However, the rest of this bed section of the tow truck feels really bare. In fact, you can see the rods going all the way through for the aforementioned flick fire missile feature. I don't like that at all. And it just seems like there could have been more detail back here. However, that does lead us into the main feature of this set. It's a tow truck of sorts, and you have this kind of crane arm right here, tow with the max weight of 250 pounds, or is it supposed to be 250,000? Either way, seems like a strange number, if you ask me. I do like the spike details on this, and of course, I already mentioned this earlier, this is where the feature with the ATM comes into play. Take the ATM, and you can hook it onto the back of the tow right there, and there you go. That's the feature, that's the smash and grab, I guess, of this set. I feel like this is a little bit meh. I kind of think Lego could have done something more interesting here, a better function, have like an actual tow cable or something. The movement isn't that great and it kind of just ends up dangling here. I mean, it works. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's a bit boring. However, if you do so choose, you can take this and actually connect it to the back of the bed here and have it be kind of held into place so Squid Trot can go and meet up with his buddies with his newfound ATM that he has stolen. So that's at least a cool feature. So, the Space Police Smash and Grab. How is this set? I like it. All right. I think it's a pretty good set. I think there are some really good aesthetic choices here. There are some decent playability functions. It just seems a little bit lackluster when compared to some other Space Police vehicles. I already complained enough about Squidtron, but the vehicle itself has some portions of it that are rather unfinished in appearance. Now, I give LEGO sets from this era a little bit more leeway with this issue because it kind of was standard practice back in 2010, but this set feels especially lacking even for that time period, and I think LEGO could have put a little bit more effort into covering up some of the gaps of this vehicle, especially towards the bed of the truck. Speaking of the bed, I already mentioned my issues with the feature. Just a little bit boring. I think it could have been more interesting. So far as value goes for this set, I think the price of 20 bucks in 2010 was pretty fantastic. I think the adjusted price around $28 is incredibly fair and seems in line with what LEGO sets are like these days. Probably a little bit better if you ask me. And finally, the aftermarket price. Around 25 bucks used, which is not bad at all. Around $50 sealed, which honestly isn't too bad. So if you like what you see and you're a big Space Police fan, I'd recommend getting this set. I certainly have my issues with this set, but at the end of the day, I think it's a pretty good build for a pretty good price and has some pretty cool stuff going for it. It's a fun little product, and that's why I'm gonna give this set here a respectable rating of a seven out of 10. Those are just my thoughts though. Love to hear yours in the comment section down below. Also, thank you all so much for watching today's review. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out. God bless. Bye bye.